and then Frankfurt Storr. Uh, Al Swanson uh, spoke to me and to, to my students, he's here in the audience, and talked about the uh, difficult times at Oak Park in the 1960s. And he was one who eventually moved his store, as did Clarence Azevedo, the former mayor, to the Fruit Ridge Manor Shopping Center, where it had a long history after that. So this is, no, you can no longer see the Ben Franklin um, here, but you can see the building in Fruit Ridge Manor. And I just wanted to reiterate how important the 4th of July uh, parade was in Oak Park. This was the largest um, parade, uh, 4th of July parade, in the Sacramento region. And it really was a major reason why people um, came out to Oak Park. I was just talking to um, uh, someone who was telling me that a lot of the floats were homemade, so you could see your friends and neighbors and the things that they had created. Uh, and that was a really fun part of the experience. But it was, again, one of those things that, that went to the suburbs uh, after the time of racial transition. And you can see the housing down here that occupies the uh, west side of 35th Street currently. Arana Brothers Grocery Stores, this reflects the Italian presence in the neighborhood. They were an important ethnic group in the early years of the neighborhood. And, um, uh, they too ended up leaving in the early 1970s. They stayed in this little building, um, and here's their house brand of coffee. Uh, as you can see, until 1927, um, a much longer um, occupant of this building on Broadway was the Swiss uh, Club, Callie Carney, um, former city council person and director of the Women's Civic Improvement Club, told us that she played many a game of pool in the Swiss Tavern. They outgrew their facilities in 1927 and moved to this much bigger building uh, just around the corner. This is now the Sacramento Food Bank. Uh, but we heard some great stories about people going to, the, to this grocery store um, in the 1940s and 1950s. Um, so this, uh, it seems like where people shop for food um, has a powerful memory. And this was among those memories, as was the Oak Park Bakery and Esther's Pastry Shop. Um, and you can still see these the signs painted on the sides of the building. Um, uh, again, Elaine Crump told us that her reward for doing shopping for her grandmother, uh, the same one that found out she was looking into the 3030 uh, club, was to get a pastry from Esther's. Uh, the automobile was not entirely kind to Oak Park, I think as I mentioned before. Uh, Oak Park had its share of gas stations like every neighborhood in, in, uh, in Sacramento and every uh, American city. A lot of these went away uh, in the great wave of consolidation of gas stations in the 1970s and 80s and 90s. This one still will sell you used tires but not gasoline. Um, but Oak Park, again, because of the age of the housing stock, much of it was built without garages. Um, and uh, people wanted garages. So some people stayed in Oak Park and added a garage, and others uh, moved to uh, other locations where they could, um, they could have that. The Oak Park Library was part of what, um, what left, uh, um, in this case, not until the 1980s. Uh, the building is still there. It belongs to McGeorge right now. It has a wonderful mural from 1939 in it. Um, it's not hard to see when you look in the front door, uh, but it is still there. Uh, several people told us they remember taking classes in the basement social room. Uh, things like ballet and folk dance were offered at the library. So lots of fond memories of this building. And it, it, uh, um, it, the library function disappeared in a wave of consolid library consolidation. And of course, uh, there is no public library anymore in Oak Park. It's in Colonial Heights across Stockton Boulevard. The building was sold to McGeorge. There are still books in there. It's uh, at least partially being used as a library by the law school. Some, some positive responses to um, some of the troubles in Oak Park included um, efforts by the police um, to change some of their behavior. Uh, in this case, they created a police athletic league where um, young people could go and play basketball and learn to box and do other constructive things like that. Um, and they took over this old ice storage plant. Uh, we heard some stories about it in its ice storage phase as well. Uh, unfortunately, this building was recently torn down. McClatchy Park. 
Um, I think many of you know the story of Joyland. This was an amusement park at the end of the streetcar line. Um, it was very, very popular in Sacramento. It was probably the single most important recreational destination in the city for, for uh, a decade or so. Um, and then when we get into the uh, 1920s, there was a fire there. William Land Park opened. People got automobiles, and it sort of fell off of people's mental maps as an attractive destination. But it became a neighborhood park. And as a, as a neighborhood park, it was the scene of um, both troubles and triumphs, I like to say. And we heard a lot about all of these things. Um, some of the troubles we heard about from Callie Carney, um, who said that she tried really hard to get people to not drive their cars up onto the lawn um, and uh, to, to not deal drugs in the park for their kids playing. Um, and she, of course, didn't back down at all. She also reported on the many years of successful jazz in the park concerts that were held there um, and were uh, peaceful and uh, very popular events for a while. Um, this is uh, Elaine Crump uh, uh, here on the left and uh, Peaches and Norm Blackwell in the middle and Louise Darden on the right. And you can see the uh, baseball fields in the Apache Park are named for uh, Norm Blackwell and Harrison Crump for their many, many positive hours of um, facilitation of softball and baseball in the park. Elaine also mentioned that her one of her brothers was the first African-American lifeguard um, in Sacramento, and that was in 1941 uh, at the, the pool, which was the one thing that survived the, um, the transition of Joyland uh, into a neighborhood park. The pool actually lived on although the current pool is a completely new, new construction. Uh, there were some businesses who stayed throughout, uh, including Stilson's Cleaners, that has been at Oak Park since 1923. Uh, this building dates from 1927, and you can see their, their uh, classic neon sign in the lower picture. This is um, um, City Councilman uh, Dan Thompson taking a stroll in a, in a photograph from the 1980s. Uh, the oldest um, uh, commercial building in Oak Park from 1896. It was a grocery store, a furniture store, and several other things. And it was also the home of Tom Seiklery for an amazing stretch from 1938 to 19, uh, sorry, to 2007. And we heard we heard poignant stories about the bikes from Tom's, including uh, a fellow who said. All our bikes came from Tom's, and another person who said, you know, my family could never afford to buy us a new bicycle. Fabulous building in Oak Park, uh, and that is a craftsman house that belonged to a, a doctor in the early years of Oak Park, and um, became the uh, Oak Park Preschool thanks to the wonderful investment and management of the uh, Alpha Kappa Alpha sorority. So a real um, upbeat note from the 1970s. The Women's Civic Improvement Club, uh, you know, Clark, which you see down here in the lower picture, has a long and storied history in Sacramento. Uh, just an amazing story um, of very low-income African-American women um, who put their, literally, their pennies together and bought their first property, which is still standing, by the way, in eight, uh, at 1830 T Street to house single African-American women who had no other place to live. Um, they upgraded that their, uh, their house to one on um, X, uh, X Street. It was taken out, unfortunately, by the WX Freeway. Ginger Rutland speaks, speaks with tremendous affection of that property. About that property, you can see the photograph on the right is probably from there. Um, and then as the situation changed, uh, the club became less focused on, I would say, um, social matters and cultural matters and more on providing social services for the poor and that's really it's, has been its role in uh, Oak Park. Uh, okay, so the last group of slides now um, will show you images uh, of um, a more recent renewal and you can see the uh, Sacramento Bank building up there on the right. Uh, it became the Bank of America for about 30 years. The Bank of America left. They did not leave Oak Park, however. They built a new bank further uh, up on Broadway. 
And uh, this uh, building became a black history museum for a while, as you can see in the photograph. Um, it was a church for a short time as well. And then it became a bank again in 1995, um, the, uh, the US bank, which it continues to be today. Uh, these two homes, which you can see in the historic photograph on the uh, left here, um, the one with the conical, uh, conical uh, turrets belonged to the same man, uh, Joseph Lewis, uh, owner of the Lewis building, so it's just about right next door there. Um, the building, uh, sorry, the building right here was actually moved over here to this location. This building was torn down, um, creating a patio here for the 40 acres building. Um, but both of these buildings were owned by the Furtado family, about which I know virtually uh, nothing, and if anybody does know something, I'd be happy to learn that. Uh, this one was owned by the um, councilman Dan uh, Thompson for a while. Um, this one was uh, renovated uh, and occupied the, by the offices of the Sacramento Philharmonic very briefly, and it's for rent right now, uh, should you have uh, a need for that. Um, more of the culture industry in Oak Park. Uh, this had a very industrial past, uh, and that is the uh, Sirocco Sheet Metal Works. Um, and it was there uh, from the 1930s to 2002, so just about as long as Tom Cyclery in the hands of the same family, um, and then became uh, an art gallery, which is the function it has today. Uh, on that same property, uh, the Sacramento Bicycle Kitchen was founded, um, a, um, an effort to provide uh, services to uh, affordable repair services um, to bicycle riders. And they, um, they have moved out of that space, but it sort of continues some of the, um, the grassroots political, social, economic organizing, perhaps, of uh, Oak Park in the past. A number of people remembered the, um, the Lion Darwin Hardware Store to us. It occupied um, this uh, uh, very nice foster building from uh, 1908. Uh, it burned to the ground um, and was replaced not too long ago by the 4th Avenue Lofts designed by Ron Verlacus. And um, I do like the way he has, con he has echoed the building in the past with those square bay windows and an effort to provide space for businesses as well as for living. Boy, we heard great things about these sausages. Uh, and uh, the Made Right Sausage Company was on what is now, unfortunately, a, uh, an empty lot in Oak Park along Broadway from about 1955 until it closed rather suddenly, I read, in 1986. Uh, another investment that came to the neighborhood um, uh, in the 1950s was uh, McGeorge School of Law, which was founded in downtown Sacramento, uh, I believe in the 1920s. And uh, they began by buying this building down here from um, 1940, designed by the first state architect, uh, George Sellen. Um, it was a clinic that was available, and they uh, purchased it, and then it continued to invest uh, to buy up additional property and to become what they say is the world's largest uh, law school campus. Um, they have uh, fairly recently made a major co commitment to diversity programs to um, participating in K-12 education in Oak Park and elsewhere. Now this, um, uh, this fellow right here is um, Daryl Roberts. Uh, Robertson of the Robertson Family um, Development Center. Roberts, thank you, uh, in uh, Indo-Pacific. 